walking in here to a barren home, it's, right. it'll, it'll never be the it's same. Really so. It's really hard. It's really hard. Okay, the word vigilant means to be watchful. And that's the root word of the word vigil. Her family is pleading for a break in the case. I'm not in connection with anything. And then since then, her family still wants to put blame on me and still wants to accuse me and say negative things about me in regards to everything. Hi guys, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. So today we have a case about a 19 year old girl from California. Now for most of us, I'm pretty sure we've been in relationships that were toxic, filled with jealousy, stress, and unhappiness. Well, unfortunately, Kiara Bergman found herself in one of those relationships. In the details surrounding her sudden death, became very perplex. This is a case of Kiara Bergman. They gon' find you, catch you sleeping. Ooh, 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 stay woke. Kiara was a 19 year old from El Cajon, California. Her mother and stepfather, Kirsten and Chris Bragg, expressed how joyful, kind, artistic, and creative Kiara was. Her sister, Brady Bragg, also shared that Kiara and her were very close, and she really admired the fact that she had Kiara as an older sister to lean on. Kiara was always available to help her and others. Now, when Kiara graduated from high school, she received a grant to attend a cosmetology program. Now, Kiara spent a lot of time watching makeup and hair tutorials, doing her own makeup and doing different hairstyles. So she knew that, you know, was the career path that she really wanted to pursue. So Kiara and her family was extremely happy about this new season, but they will then realize that Kiara dreams and ambitions will be interrupted because you really have to be careful on who you let into, you know, your inner circle. So around November 2017, Kiara met 22-year-old John Clark. She actually met John on Tinder and after one of her friends, you know, told her about the dating app and when she matched with John, she began talking to him right away and they instantly had a connection. Kiara bragged about John to her sister, her mom, and she really expressed how much she liked John. You know, they were very surprised because Kiara never talked about a boy really around them like that. So they knew like, okay, Kiara really likes this guy. So eventually Kiara, you know, grew to fall in love with John and their relationship was inseparable. But after four months of dating John, in March 2018, Kiara dropped out of cosmetology school and moved to Glendale, Arizona with John. Now, John was originally from the Phoenix area, and, you know, he told Kiara that, look, you know, he wants to go home. He was homesick and things like that. So Kiara was like, all right, well, I'll go ahead and go with you. So John and Kiara had gotten a place together in Phoenix. Meanwhile, her parents are for sure concerned. They're like, what the heck? This is extremely risky, you know, to just do a big move like that, especially because she only knew John for four months and she didn't have any family in Phoenix, you know, to really support her, to watch her or anything like that. Even though she, you know, she was 19, her family just didn't feel comfortable with their baby girl traveling miles away with a man they really didn't know. And she only had one good high school friend that she knew who actually lived out there, who was um, Destiny Chant. So Kiara and John, you know, they go out to Phoenix and Kiara is excited about the whole thing. You know, she's letting her parents know, hey, don't worry about me. It's OK. I got it. You know, just let me fly my wings at this point. But unfortunately, John, not even a month yet living with Kiara, broke up with her after two weeks of them moving in together. So Kiara had to move in with her friend destiny. 
And even though Kiara was devastated about the breakup, she still had her own things, you know, going on for herself. Like she had her own car, her own apartment, you know, and she had a very good job. So she still had her head on straight and just managed every day to push forward. But John, of course, came back around and the couple started to rekindle their relationship to the point John actually moves in with Kiara and her friend into their own apartment. So when Kiara's family, you know, they find this out, of course they're upset about it because at this point, they don't really like John nor trust him. You know, he's now living in her apartment. Like they just felt like the whole situation was weird because every single time John needed something from Kiara, he would try to creep back in and, you know, manipulate her and things like that. So pretty much her family felt like John was a leech because he didn't have anything going on for himself. So he tried to just he tried to really just leech onto Kiara just to, you know, make it out here. But, you know, Kiara, she stressed it to her parents, like, look, you know, he's he's a changed man. I love him. He's different now. You know, things are going to be different now. But sadly, things didn't get better at all. On August 6, 2018, Destiny called Kiara's mother in California and told her that Kiara was missing for two days. She expressed that Kiara never showed up for work, which was unlike her to do. You know, she was very responsible. And Destiny didn't hesitate to fill out a missing persons report at the police station to find her friend. So Destiny on her own, she moved very quickly, you know, with the process and really just notifying Kiara's parents like, look, you know, something's wrong. Kiara's missing. Just to let you know, I already filled out, um, you know, a missing persons report. Like she was on top of it and her family was on top of it because at this point, they're extremely worried because it's not like Kiara to not reach out to her family and it's not like, you know, Kiara to miss work. Like, that's something she didn't really do. So Kiara's mom, you know, she starts to panic and immediately feels like something is extremely wrong. So Destiny is like, okay, well, the last time she saw Kiara was on August 4th. She stated that she received a strange text from Kiara on 1.57 p.m. briefly stating that she broke up with John and she's done with John. She doesn't want to be with him and that she met a new guy a couple days ago at the store. And she asked him to come pick her up from her house and now she's just chilling with her new boo at his place. And then she proceeds to let Destiny know, hey, you know, I'll reach back out to you when I get a charger and make sure John leaves the house. So when Destiny sees this random text, she's like, wait, like this just sounds weird. It feels weird. First of all, who the heck is this new boo? And where are you? Like, it just didn't sound right. So Destiny felt like, okay, Kiara is definitely not behind this phone. Maybe it's somebody else. And a huge key factor to this was that um, Destiny and Kiara's family, her mom, her dad, her little sister, they knew that the text messages Kiara sent was way off. Like, you know, you know, there's some people that write complete sentences and paragraphs, like their grammar is on point. And then I'm sure majority of us, when we're texting, we use abbreviations like LOL, oh my God, TTYL, and etc. Well, Kiara, she definitely always texted the same way, formatted her text, you know, in a particular way as well. Kiara would often text like two lines and then the rest of the message was like abbreviated and she texted everyone this way. So she wasn't a person that actually texted a lot at all. So when the parents and Destiny saw this, it was pretty weird. 
So since investigators were notified about Kiara's disappearance, they felt like Kiara left her home to meet up with a guy so she maybe purposely disappeared or ran away with this man. But Kiara was 19 years old so she was already considered an adult. So in detectives mind, they already feel like she left at her own will. But the more investigators studied the case, they still felt like some things just didn't add up because Kiara actually actually left behind a few things like her purse, car keys, credit cards. Um, what else did she leave? Her cell phone. She left a lot behind. So Kiara's family, they go down to Phoenix right away. They don't waste time and they're sending out flyers, putting flyers up that she's missing. And her little sister actually created a Facebook page to bring awareness to um, Kiara's disappearance and started using the hashtags bring Kiara home. So now it's been a good week and there's still no sign of Kiara. So her family, they hold a vigil and a lot of people show up, you know, to express their love and support. And even though it was a good feeling to know that the news of Kiara's disappearance was getting out there in the media and within, you know, the community, Kiara's parents couldn't help but feel like, <sighs> just pretty much devastated. That she is somewhere hearing their pleas for her to come home safely. You're a good, good father, to you are. We just, we want her home. We want her safe. Friday, crime scene tape wrapped around Kiara Bergman's apartment. But now, her family and friends place flowers at her doorstep. Just walking in here to a barren home. It's, right. It'll, it'll never be the it's same. Really, you know? It's really, she was a very it's really hard. hard. Her roommates say they can't even stay there anymore. Kiara's best friend, Destiny Hall Chand, called 911 when she didn't come home after sending a strange text message. She was saying that she was going to go out with, you know, some guy that she met at the store a couple of days ago, which is something that's not like her. I mean, that's not something that she would do. That was a week ago. Now her family from San Diego is staying in Phoenix until they get answers. We are just being flooded with messages and and people telling us that they're praying for us and praying that she comes home safe. I just miss my sister and I want her to come home. <laughs> her neighbors in Glendale and close friends she made in the few short months she's been here all came out to show their support. This is a visual of hope. Okay, the word vigilant means to be watchful. And that's the root word of the word vigil. Her family is pleading for a break in the case. Kira, I mean, if you're wherever you are, if you can hear this, if you can see it or hear it, just know that we are doing everything we can and fighting so hard to find you. So Kiara's family, you know, they spent a lot of time thinking back on how Kiara was acting excuse me, before she disappeared. And they noticed that Kiara went from being this happy, bubbly, you know, person to this quiet and timid person that barely talked to her family at all. And it was like she was a completely different person. They felt like Kiara really changed the moment John Clark got involved with their daughter. And John had a lot of controlling traits and issues. Kiara's sister shared that whenever she will ask Kiara a question, John would look at her and answer for her. Like nothing Kiara did was unnoticed by him. He literally had to know every single thing. She wasn't able to go to the grocery store alone or do errands alone. Like he pretty much had just a lot of narcissistic traits. So when it's finally time to question John, police do not hesitate to apply some pressure because he's the boyfriend. So they already kind of feel like he's a suspect you know usually police they look at a spouse or partner with situations like this and he was the last person to see Kiara before she disappeared 
So while John was questioned, he did express that he was with um, Kiara the night she went missing. John said he picked Kiara up from work at 10.36 a.m. because she told him that she wasn't really feeling well. He said once they got back to the apartment, they started arguing. He said he wanted to move to Texas and live with a family member. So because of this, um, this conversation apparently really upset Kiara and she stormed out the house. So John did express that the moment Kiara left that devastated him. He felt really bad because it was his birthday. Now, um, the moment Kiara left, he said that he never spoke to her again after that day. But investigators didn't really think John was being truthful. So they asked him to take a polygraph test and he refused to. So when he refused to take the test, it really made him look very suspicious. So because of this, John really wanted to save face in a way he didn't want people looking at him as a threat or, you know, a person that, you know, really harmed his girlfriend. So on August 15th, he spoke with the media and made a public announcement and said he wouldn't hurt Kiara. And he was just trying to, you know, celebrate his birthday and things like that. So I'll definitely put the clip here. Kiara's been missing since August 4th, which was my birthday. And um, we've been trying to do everything we can to find out what's going on and see if we can make some link to get her back or find anything about what's going on. We go back to the house and then we chill. Um, she's trying to keep me in good spirits because it's my birthday, but I was kind of sad because we weren't really doing anything. And then um, we just started getting to little bickering and arguing and then she got upset and then she left. I was trying to message her, trying to contact her, get her to come back to, to the house. And um, I wasn't really getting a response. And then Sunday goes by, I'm, I'm still messaging her all day. I'm messaging her friend Destiny. I'm not really getting a response from either one of them. And then on Monday morning, she had to be at work at 6.30. I started messaging both of them around five, asking like, what's going on? Does Karen need me to take her to work? Like, what's going on? And then um, Destiny told me that she still haven't heard from her, that she still didn't come back to the house. So I let her know, I was like, okay, well, if she doesn't go to work, I think we should file a, like a missing persons report, call the police. I was surrounded by about 20 police officers. They told me that they had a court order to bring me down and speak with me. But from the moment that they encountered me, um, they pretty much treated me like a sus suspect. They had me in handcuffs. They put me in the back of the car. Um, they drove me down to the station. When I was in the interview room, I was handcuffed to the table and they let me go that night. I'm not in connection with anything. And then since then, her family still wants to put blame on me and still wants to accuse me and say negative things about me in regards to everything. I just feel like her family is kind of just looking for someone to blame and someone to bring them answers or someone to just bring conclusion to everything. And then since I am her boyfriend and I, I was the last one to be with her, she was, her mom mainly just really wants to blame me for everything. I had nothing to do with anything that's going on. I love Kira with all my heart. I want her to come home. Please come home, Kira. I love you. So after Kiara's family saw John's um, public interview, they felt like it was so fake. Like all they felt was John was saving face. All he was talking about was his birthday. Like he could not stop talking about himself. He wasn't really being honest or genuine. Meanwhile, on August 17th, police obtained a search warrant for John's car. They found 24 California driver's license that didn't belong to John and he was arrested and was charged with 22 counts of aggravated um, identity theft and two counts of forgery. So Lord knows what John was doing or getting himself into. But after that interview, um, investigators were really looking into him now. So with everything going on, police suspect that Kiara's case was a foul play and somebody else was definitely involved with her disappearance. So on September 3rd, 2018, a cyclist found human remains that were decomposed on a isolated road in Buckeye, Arizona, 50 miles outside of Glendale. The remains were identified as Kiara, but the cause of death 
was undetermined. This case for sure now was labeled as a possible homicide. So when Kiara's family, you know, they find out the news, everyone is extremely devastated. Like her mom expressed in an interview that when she found when she found out all she could do is yell and cry. Her stepfather and sister, they were in so much pain because somebody so beautiful and joyful and bubbly was literally taken away from you and you don't know why so the family they didn't hesitate to really seek answers on what happened to Kiara and they already created a new hashtag for Kiara on Facebook to bring more awareness and it was now justice for Kiara the police immediately brought John in for questioning. Meanwhile, he's still in jail for the forgery and identity theft. So it wasn't hard to get him get him in a second time for questions. So when they asked John about the area um, where Kiara's remains were found, he asked for a lawyer right away. Like he didn't even hesitate and he didn't even continue talking. Like he asked for his lawyer. He was like, look, you know, that's a wrap. This is done. I'm done talking to y'all. And when investigators asked Kiara's parents if they thought John had anything to do with Kiara's passing and disappearance, they didn't hesitate to say yes, especially since Kiara's friend and roommate, you know, Destiny, she came forward and expressed that John was actually very abusive towards Kiara. And there were many times she saw bruises on Kiara's body. Destiny and Kiara's neighbors also told um, Kiara's family and investigators that they saw John and another man carrying garbage bags out of the apartment the same day Kiara disappeared. And they were also loading bags into Kiara's car. And they made many trips back and forth. The police also looked into John and Kiara's cell phone records and discovered that on the day Destiny received that message from Kiara, Kiara's phone actually pinged from inside her apartment, meaning John or someone was the one who sent the messages to Destiny because you know, Kiara already told Destiny that she was at her, you know, supposedly other man's house. So why was she receiving text messages from inside of her apartment? And another strange thing was that John was actually on Instagram speaking to a friend about how police can use the Find My iPhone app to track down Kiara's phone. And soon after that conversation, Kiara's phone was suddenly inactive. So on September 14th, 2018, John was taken in for second degree murder for the death of Kiara. But sadly, John pleaded not guilty. And the sick part about it is that the case was actually thrown out. So this was something the family and friends did not see coming at all. Like even myself, when I researched this case, I was extremely shocked about that. Like forget about him pleading not guilty, but they pretty much just threw the whole case away, even though they had all of this evidence. Like it just it, it wasn't really making sense. So on May 14th, 2019, John was taken in again a second time to talk about this case. And meanwhile, the family was definitely extremely hopeful. They felt like, okay, this time they're going to receive justice. They're going to get their answers. Like there's no way John is coming out of this. But no, in April 2020, another judge dismissed the case for the second time because the prosecutors mishandled evidence. Now, as of 2022, there are current um, updates in an article, and I'm definitely going to read that right now to you guys because it took me a minute to find out if this case was currently going on or if John is just out here somewhere free and walking about. So an AZ Central 
um, article. It says here, the Maricopa County's attorney office confirmed to the Republic on Friday morning that the case was handed over to Pinal County, but said it could not comment further on pending prosecution. The Pinal County Attorney's Office said it agreed to take on the case, but referred the Republic to Maricopa County for further details as to why it was moved. Pinal County has requested a continuance until late spring or early summer due to the complexity of the case and is awaiting the judge's um, ruling, Attorney's Office spokesperson Mike Patel said. So um, John's Clark trial is currently scheduled for February um, 2022, according to court records. And I saw another um, post as well. And let me put that up here. Now, I wanted to know if John Clark was, you know, just held up in jail. So it says here that John Clark has said he was the last one to see um, Kiara before she disappeared until three weeks ago. Clark had been in custody since his 2018 arrest. He was released and placed on electronic monitoring on March 12th, according to court records. And that was um, April 2020. So, I'm guessing that he's on house arrest. There hasn't been much updates regarding the case now. I mean, I'm pretty sure during this summer, pretty much all right now, this case, you know, should be, you know, moving and getting active. And I'm really praying that the family receives justice because even if John didn't do something, he knows somebody that did because there was another person helping him um, put things in Kiara's car. So I don't know. It's just kind of weird why this case is prolonging. I mean, there's a lot of clear evidence here. So I don't know. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments below how you guys feel about that. But Kiara was only 19 with so much life ahead of her. And she was in an abusive relationship and things turned left quickly. And that's why I'm encouraging anyone that's watching now, whether it's physical abuse, mental abuse, verbal abuse, or emotional abuse, abuse is abuse and it's not okay. Like guys, I'm talking from experience. I know, you know, like sometimes you might think, okay, it's not that bad. You know, like, oh, it's just small. But the thing with abuse, it will grow and it will grow and it will get stronger and stronger to the point where you feel like you can't get out of the situation. If you guys are understanding, you know what I mean. So I feel like Kiara, in the beginning, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure John showed his face. He was so like charming and, you know, everything seemed very beautiful. And oh my goodness, you know, Kiara was like, oh my God, I'm in love. But after a while, you can see how Kiara's sister saw that he was controlling, you know, people around her saw certain things, but I'm not sure if she did. And maybe if she did, she probably was afraid to be very vocal about it because, you know, it became to a point where John was speaking for her. You know, he was clocking her wherever she went. She couldn't even go to the grocery store and do her own things at a night as a 19 year old girl. You know, that's just that's sick and it's crazy to the point now where now she's she's no longer here. So I'm sure it started with the controlling, maybe the verbal abuse, maybe a lot of arguing. And then it turned into the physical physical abuse when he left with probably Kiara to live in Phoenix, and that's when now you know her friend Destiny was seeing all the bruises, the all the bruises on her body and things like that. So I just want to say this, like here, I know I have a lot of like followers that are around my age, um, um late teens like 18 19 early 20s 20s and even older um viewers that watch my channel abuse is abuse whether it's verbal 
emotional, physical, you know, financial, mentally, like abuse is abuse and it's not okay. It's not. Kiara's family now help victims of domestic violence as of 2022. So let's for sure pray for Kiara's family and friends. I know this is a devastating time for them, especially going through this whole trial with John. You know, they have to relive this situation still. So let's go ahead and pray for healing and pray for peace for them. Father God, we all come together and we pray for Kiara's family. We pray for her parents, her siblings, Father Lord God, her friends, and extended family, Lord God. We know that right now it's hard for them. We know that they're hurting, especially with a situation where they still haven't received justice yet. So I'm praying, Father Lord God, whether John was involved or somebody else was involved, I pray, Father Lord God, that the truth comes out, that whatever is in the dark will always come to light so that this family can receive the full healing that they deserve, Father Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you provide them just inner peace, inner healing, only healing that you can provide, Father Lord God, because you know how deep that hurt is in losing a child and losing a, a sister a friend, Father Lord God. So I'm asking you right now, Lord God, to intervene with this case that's currently active as of 2022. We all know that, Lord God. So I'm praying that this year, this year, Father Lord God, the truth will come out, Father Lord God, and that you put your hands on this case and expose everything that was meant to be in the dark, Lord God, so that this family can receive justice, Lord. And I pray while you know, they're going through this, that their relationship with you gets stronger or they eventually meet you. They meet your peace. They meet your love, your everlasting love, Father Lord God, to help them just get through this tough time for all these years since 2018. It's now 2022. So Father Lord God, I know, we know that you can do all things, Lord God. So we're praying for Kiara's family, and we're praying that justice is served at the end of the day. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next case. They gon' find you, catch you sleeping, ooh, ooh, ooh. stay woke, baby creeping.